Hello and welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Nerdarchy Steve and I'm joined by all these wonderful nerds tonight. And we are going to be playing Nobody's Heroes. And Steven has moved on me because now your head is being cut off. I will fix that momentarily. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> ah, it's so ah. painful. Uh, but uh, on that note, I will. T I will. I there. Boom. You're fixed. Hey. Your, he your head is no longer being cut off. <laughs> hey, I'm thrilled. I have a full head now. Yay. <laughs> oh, wait. We have another person here. Another Ooh. person just popped in. Oh, yeah. we do. Oh, do we have a mootling? We might, we might have a mootly. Um... Okay. Well, while Ted is, or well, while Dave is figuring all that out, sorry, I was looking at Ted because he's right next to mootly on my thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, while Dave is figuring all this out, um, let's talk about what has happened so far. This is our grand finale. So we have the Crime Ruiners, a group of B-list heroes that exist in this world where the main supers are all gone. Hey, so uh, they have been dealing with B-list villains. And uh, you know what? I'm going to let everybody else tell you about all this because we love our superheroes. We love our recaps. We love Sirenscape. Shout out to Sirenscape. There we go. Um, Let's see, I'm gonna roll my D5 and see who's gonna start us out with all this business. Uh, Mootly FYI, in the Zoom chat, we can only see part of your head. <laughs> well, that's all right, I'm gonna- hey, hey, that's all right. I got yeah, some hey, things to do. got too big. So, uh, Doug, my dice that has favored you tonight. All right, hey, I'm Nerder Doug. I'm playing Night Light, who is a light-based hologram superhero. Um, as my, as per usual, my notes have gotten smaller and smaller each time, like all campaigns. All I wrote down was 28 indoctrinated super beings. That was my only note from last time. <laughs> I, actually, uh, I think we fought Mimi in various stages and forms while attempting to get some of uh, that's power neutralizing gas, which we did, and I'll leave the rest to my fellow superheroes, starting with Robin. Not a hero. Uh, I have, <laughs> however, spread my abilities to the terminally ill last session to see uh, which of them would be willing to help us fight the space werewolves, because oh there are space God. werewolves. Uh, <laughs> Mootly, you want to take this? Uh, space werewolves and other aliens that merge with other creatures and we are the last gasp as we actually have to fight the old soup who have been indoctrinated the a-list and have uh we fear that we will fail quite badly but we are all that we have uh, i will throw it to ted Hey everybody, I'm Nerdarchist Ted. You probably have a clue as to who, who that is if you're here watching this channel, but you know, if not, search Nerdarchy, you'll find us. Uh, I am gonna be playing Winda, AKA Kiefer Greenleaf, the, uh, you know, weatherman news agent slash, you know, pot-based superhero. Uh, a lot, of, lot of fun things going on. We started last session off kind of in danger with uh, basically a pair of Mimi's kicking our asses at you know challenge level nine certainly kind of outside of our league and thankfully one of them walked away because i was pretty sure that we were about to die uh but as you know they kind of pointed out we did get away with the power neutralizing you know gas that we're hoping to use against these werewolf merged superheroes that are now on the way here and we've got like a couple hours notice so yeah, some of us are pretty sure that we're about to die. So uh, I'll throw it off to you, Dave. I'm Nordica Steve, and I'm playing the superhero Blowhard with wind-based powers. And he believes that's why they call him Blowhard. Um, I don't think I have anything to add to that. I think you guys. I feel like you guys covered everything. They did. They were really good at it. Um, my camera is being dumb. Mm -hmm. Hey. <laughs> Hopefully that works. Um, so yeah, with that out of the way, uh, we are going to dive right in. So if you remember last time, you had all of your friends and family, the gathered heroes and villains alike, all at your base at the uh, Hall of Crime Ruining or whatever you've chosen to call it, I don't remember. But uh, yes, and you have seen these ships in the distance. It seems that the Kavarans have arrived. 
And so uh, at this point, you have only a few hours until they apparently begin landing and terrorizing your fair city. So what are you going to do? Oh, I seem to, okay, so I seem to remember we started like the prep and there, a lot of people are going to do a lot of useful things, but I think Blowhard was going to go take a nap. Okay. He's focusing uh, his chi. Okay. He's, med- he's meditating. <laughs> well, All Light Light and have. Winda are like smart and they're figuring things out. I mean, Katie might do some of that as well, but you know, Blowhard is just waiting for something to happen. Okay. All right. Uh, and Magpie so, also went on, on their mission to assemble the Night of the Living Dead. I did. <laughs> I do have a question, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, so does our danger younger. room have an option to uh, dunk with the gravity settings? Um, let's do a happenstance roll. You want high or low? Uh, let's go low. I didn't even know we had a danger room. Ah, uh, it does not. Okay. Well, that was but my we only idea. Room. Go forth and do cool things. Okay. So, uh, you are going to the hospital and you've, you're just rushing through. You managed to get, I think we said 13. Yeah, uh, I think so. Individuals who were willing to fight as vampires alongside you. Um, so are you guys going to try to lure them to your hideout then? Or are you going to meet them in the city? I think I think we had a plan that was kiboshed by them showing up, and we didn't really come up with what to do from there. Yes. As, as I recall. That is correct. <laughs> yeah, so initially, I don't we were know. talking about going in the space, and I was yeah. super enthused with that idea, because I was going to just wormhole people out in the space where there's no gravity. <laughs> well, um, Winda and I did spend the night working on the ship with... Tracy Columbus, maybe was he involved, or, uh-huh. one of, one of, or one of those three people, to sort of like prep it to get there. Okay. Is it possible Is that... for us to intercept them? You can intercept them still if you want to go right now. Yeah, I Is mean, that what you guys are doing space. I already told my mom okay. I was going to space to save the world, and I don't want to space, be space, space, space. <laughs> Okay. All right. So you guys are going to space. Can I just ask one favor, only because I must not have taken the correct note. Um, can you remember what the last cipher that uh, Crocodiles gave Elaine was? Uh, I don't remember, but I should have it somewhere. I don't have last session's ciphers in my notes for some reason. I got alien spaceships for dummies, if that helps jog your memory. Yes, that was amazing. <laughs> um, I bet you somebody, I bet you Lindsay probably knows the chat. Yeah, I bet you Lindsay does know. Just wait 30 seconds. <laughs> the delay, yeah. Um, we can say that you got another one of those red lion, white mane talismans, if you want. Bring people back to <laughs> Talisman sounds just, cool. Just quick, go back and rewatch the last episode. <laughs> <laughs> real quick, real quick. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, um, we'll say you got one of those talismans. So you have like a Amazing. safety button. And uh, oh, that does sound familiar. Yeah, like the like the Final Fantasy Phoenix. Mm-hmm. So. Um, you guys are going to go intercept them in their ships. You see this massive, uh, it looks almost like a wolf-faced ship that's descending. Uh, and and it has uh, these, um, the uh, paws are actually like made into these swiveling uh, rockets. And uh, you see that it's being propelled with a uh, rocket that's coming out where the butt would be. And... Uh, <laughs> There, uh, there is one that looks like a bigger ship, and then there are about uh, four smaller ships. So there are five ships in total. I'd be using scan as much as possible since it's free with my edge. And it's not a huge area, but just you know, is if, 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 when we're close to if any could, ship or anything. If we, could, I, I'm Leo's astounded. He's in space. This is awesome. If we could quickly make a cat ship to fly in the other direction. 
problem. I could uh, use my. I could make a ho pretty realistic looking hologram blow hard. Do you think that would work? Oh, Lindsay says she knows nothing. Uh, unfortunately, so. I don't think so. It won't have the cat smell, and you can't smell in space mm -hmm. anyway. I think Probably. my illusion. I think I could actually affect people's olfactory senses with my illusions. Uh, Dave, I need you to know that you completely blew my mind. <laughs> Why? Like, obviously you can't smell in space. It wouldn't have any vector to carry it, but, like, I never thought about that before. <laughs> <laughs> it does not include smell, but it does include sound. Well, uh, I, I think we're, we're not talking about, you know, no one in people. space, no one can hear you smell. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. But I, I don't think they're going to be deceived. They've got their destination in mind. You're probably correct. Just a little levity before we fly into death. Well, right. you know, I, I appreciate the uh, well, Do we think the indoctrinated superheroes are on the flagship? That was our plan, right? Um, and so uh, Tracy can tell you that um, the, uh, the flagship has heroes and villains, it's true, but uh, they're on all of the ships. That's the only invading force right now. So um, we have heroes and villains here. So basically, you guys are going to call the shots. Do you want to take the flagship and have everyone deal with the uh, peripheral ships? Or do you want to each lead a task force? Or how do you want to do this? Oh, we brought all the people with us? You have all of them there. Oh, wow. I thought it was, OK, wow, that changes everything. Yeah. <laughs> Now we're cooking. So, I don't know that I would know this, but Winda, can you wormhole one ship into another ship? Unfortunately, my uh, my portal only opens up about so big, so it's enough for us to get through. <laughs> That's great, perfect. Do it right in the center, right? And when they go to fly through, just that portion gets wormholed. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, I yeah, I, I wish so it was. I'd say we way. just cut off the head of the wolf, as it were. I mean, if we all just take on that flagship. I agree. I look yeah. to blow hard for leadership, though. How, so, if, how uh, are we getting there again? Do we have a way to fly up there? You do. You have, uh, in fact, um, I thought we just uh, crash it right into it. You, you see that uh, Tracy has uh, driven up in what looks like a normal car. And uh, driving at the helm is your beloved bus driver friend. Arnold? Arnold is here. All right. The bus uh, driver's coming uh, out of retirement. Uh, no, uh, no. Mm -hmm. And he uh, flips he was... open the, uh, the prindle, the, uh, the, uh, the stick. And when he does, there's a button inside. He clicks it and the entire thing starts folding almost like origami outward, making this massive spaceship from a relatively normal looking car. And my, uh my head cannon is he was actually the A-lister they missed, but because he had been in retirement. Oh. He's just he was just laying low as a bus <laughs> <Yeah>. driver. <laughs> he was a, he was the driver for A-listers. A so uh yeah, that is who's driving you? And uh, you guys Best are going to have to decide, are you guys storming the main ship and having everybody deal with the peripheral ships, or do you each want to lead a group? I think, that, I, think together. We're, I think we're sticking together and taking it head on. Okay. I, I, you know, I, I, I don't know. My, my thought is if we, you know, kind of use their own tactics against us and come in from the side, you know, ambush style, you want to go head on see how that works okay all right um and you do see that now as the ships are descending just a little bit more towards the atmosphere some of them are the ones that aren't the alpha ship are kind of going ahead and they're starting to assault the city so um bombshell tells you we'll deal with the trouble down here i knew you were 18 material bombshell you got this and she just kind of smiles at uh, Ilang and Magpie and says, all right, just go be heroes. And then she heads off with the, the with Hot Dog and uh, Babe and Werebear. 
So they're all headed in that direction. You see um, a group of villains that include Sludgemonger and Grace and uh, uh, Weatherman. They're all headed in another direction toward another ship. So uh, it seems that everyone's sort of splitting off into their own teams, which leaves you guys free to take Where, on the head ship. Where's the dog catcher? The dog catcher is uh, currently making a sandwich in your kitchen and has not been assigned a team yet. I think oh, we should take man. him with us. <laughs> right? I think he's ideal. I There's think dogs, have, uh, he's immortal. Yeah, I think that would have been a, a smart play. As I look out the window of Crime Rune or HQ and see that, you know, these villains and everything happen, I say, I reflect to myself like, see, I knew it. All we needed was a good alien contact to bring us all together and make us all heroes. Hmm. All right. So uh, you guys head off in your ship and uh, everyone is going to have to take a position on the ship, okay. which is going to require some intellect rolls to maneuver. Um, your base difficulty is going to be a four. Okay, this so is just a driving. general intellect check to just to get us there. And, I am you know, not driving. Safe. For driving or technology or uh, alien tech or anything of that nature. Well, I have a variety of skills like optics, quantum electronics, and engineering. I would certainly, you know, just help plot the safest course and like nav points and, you know, all those sorts of things. Okay. If what they're about, shooting what about perception? Is that helpful in any way, shape, or form? That can absolutely be helpful in this situation. So they would, since I'm... Each of you are going to have to tell me what you are doing. So I stole a stick shift once before I actually knew how to properly drive a stick shift. Does that help me figure out how to pilot things? Sure, it gives you an ass. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a 13. A 13, okay, okay. So um, you succeed. So uh, you're kind of finagling with these controls and it's just intuitive to you. I mean, you're using somebody else's vehicle. It works. And, uh, I'm, I'm looking I pretend for, I stole it. <laughs> I'm looking for, you know, our 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 entry point. While I know that uh, Nightlight is working on actual navigation, I'm paying attention to the enemy vessel so that, like, we're like, all right, here's a weak spot or here's docking bay or something. I'm, I'm pinpointing you know that that spot is our go-to oh, cool, i rolled a, yeah. i rolled a, i rolled a 15. okay ranks so i'm good all right so you find you you really you got this you are the navigator pro numero uno i got a 16 and what it was a difficulty two check to just sort of like okay. make sure we you know like just piloted the ship correctly all right, you you are you. This is like uh, second nature to you, and you uh, maneuver the ship, and it is flying through the clouds like butter. It is smooth. It is silky. There is no turbulence. Uh, what about Blowhard? Blowhard sits behind one of the consoles and begins going to work. I rolled a seven. I failed. Turns out it's the food <laughs> processor that he's actually operating. Oh no! <laughs> not a part. Of, not part. Making of a smoothie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know I if it. I'm flying any better or helping at all, but I got this protein shake here. <laughs> and you, you hear Arnold just kind of shout, "You didn't know that was a blender." I hey, Arnold. Know. Last week he was a strip mall sensei. No offense. Now he's piloting an alien spaceship. You know what? Fair point. The I've never seen so many buttons hard. on a blender before. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, he might have been a, uh, you know, a mall sensei last week, but he's still not piloting a ship now. They still just <laughs> operating a smoothie. True. <laughs> and doing so great at it. Listen, we all we all have to operate to our strengths here. Um, okay. So, Elang, you're the last one. How are Elang you helping? Is stand, Elang is standing behind the pilots, helping him okay. understand what it tr truly means to fly and expressing okay. poetic words of flight. Hmm. Um, and 
scoring and rolled a 12 in assistance. Okay. Okay. So your words of encouragement I'm explaining what she can do. Your words of explaining just how it works and how the air current should feel and how it should respond to you, it, it really helps him out. And so uh, between him and uh, and uh, Nightlight, you guys succeed on your total challenge and you make it up to the Alpha ship, which is just outside the atmosphere. And you notice that weirdly, this ship looks like it's... Uh, got flickering lights on inside. And the light is silvery and almost evokes an idea of like your moon in the night sky. Yeah, it's like lunar light. Mm -hmm. So were we able to configure any of this, uh, you know, gas into uh, a missile, uh, you know, format? So like it, we could send the missile into the ship and have it explode and release the gas? Or was that not possible um you haven't found out yet but you haven't uh you haven't found a ventilation system or anything as of yet okay so you probably I have to do have that a... on the ship i have a very important question how okay. tall do we think your audio just cut out yeah you said how, how tall, do, tall we think? do you think think the levels of the spaceship are um, it looks like they reach about 20 feet each, so they're pretty tall. So they're 20, okay, cool, cool. So a Lang bursting through each level with her head and releasing gas that way won't work because not quite. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you guys make it to the side of the ship and because you succeeded on your challenge by more than one, uh, you don't have to roll to try to find the connection point to board. Okay. So uh, you find a side boarding port. You don't know if they're expecting you, but uh, the doors open and you see that this mist sort of rolls in from the ship. Ooh. And <clears throat> yeah, uh, as you, um, as you, uh, begin to board the ship, you realize that this mist is permeating the entire ship. It's not just like in the entrance. The, the ship is covered in mist and there are these lights overhead that once again, they resemble moonlight, but it flickers a little bit um, and buzzes. Like it's not quite functioning at capacity. Um, I'm gonna scan means... the mist. That's the first thing I do. And there's like oh, a, yeah. oh, look cool. Cause it's like a laser light kind of like, like through the... So you scan the mist. I'm a you notice. Oh my goodness. From the doorway three, of our ship. I'm not getting out of there. Three heartbeats inside right. this first area. I whisper that to my friends. There's three distinct heartbeats out there. I can't tell what they are though. Right. I'm gonna I'm gonna go do something foolish. Hold on. Uh so I'll I'll use distortion to kind of blend into the mist that's there. Okay. And I'm gonna go scout and see if I can see see these uh, these folk, see who they are, see what's going on. Okay. All right. So you're trying to skim through, or are you trying to like blow it all away? No, I'm I'm, I'm going into it. I'm I'm using that as as cover for stealth. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The, I got yeah. you. Distortion's like a stealthy ability. To yeah. We okay. Sure. It's a lesser right. invisibility. Yeah. Uh, but it, you know, it makes me even speedier than I am. So, okay. And windier. As a, so. Um, as he's doing that, Alang grows big, as nine size of a giraffe, and okay. like stands in the middle of the room, purposely being the big giant target, to enable him to sneak through and distort even better, and so they focus on her rather than the sneaky, sneaky man doing his business. Okay, so um, you uh, you stand in the middle, and you immediately see two shadows of these canine humanoids standing uh, in the distance on one side as the hallway opens up into this bigger room. And uh, you see there are ships in that bigger room, 
one of the figures appears to be holding a weapon of some sort, like a might be a gun. It, it looks older than a gun, though. And uh, meanwhile, Ted, well. go ahead and give me a uh, a uh, speed check to be stealthy. Sure. Your difficulty for these guys is going to be a nine. All right. Uh, so uh, I've got four, so it brings it down to a 15. Um, I will... That distortion gives you an asset on speed defense rolls. Right. Um, so... Right, so then I will spend uh, a level of effort. I'll bring it down to a four, so that's a 12. I rolled an 18. Okay. So, Winda, the first thing you notice is... Um, you see that the the figure holding the weapon, the weapon is a crossbow. Okay. And uh, the figure is wearing tattered clothing. It looks like these wolf people are still wearing the clothing that they wore when they were heroes, villains, whatever, but it's now smaller on their large nine foot tall figures. And so um, they're like lanky. Um, if you've played World of Warcraft, like the troll build. Sure. Um, so like long arms, very lanky, but tall. And um, you see that the one with the crossbow is wearing black, um, like a black duster with a hat. And um, the duster is ripped uh, against the creature's musculature. And uh, you would recognize that this is Vanessa Helsing. And uh, what's more, standing beside her is someone who she frequently clashed with. It is a wolf with this painted smile and like this red flare of hair, almost evokes Dragon Ball Z vibes. And uh, these long claws and its fangs are even longer than the other ones. And its nose is bright red. And you would recognize this is a werewolf version of that because I rolled that and Vanessa Helsing together. Oh, you just randomly roll this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, nice. I randomly rolled for all of the heroes and villains you're going to be encountering. So you oh, wow, cool, man. So far. Love uh, me so some randomness. All right, I, w I would ask, like, who I would consider a, a threat, uh, or the, the bigger threat. But I, I don't think, as you kind of got into the description, that, you know, the plan is going to work on that. Um, so here, here's my stupid plan. Mm -hmm. I've got a sleeping pill. I want to shove it down Vanessa Helsing's throat. Okay. So uh, go ahead and make a speed roll. Your difficulty is a nine with this one as well. Yep, I'm going to do the same thing as I did last time. See what happens. That is a 19. Dear Lord. That's okay. All. All right, so you, uh, how do you do this? You describe it to me. What do you do specifically? So I'm hiding in in the in the, the mist that, that's here. And I imagine it's a sleeping pill. So as mm -hmm. they're kind of talking to each other, I literally just kind of like flick the pill and it just goes perfectly where I want it. So like, as she's like, finishes talking and goes to swallow, it just will break down. <laughs> like, like okay. A I think it just ate a bug. <laughs> so she, with this, rides the smoky wind and 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 she kind and the, the maw kind of like <laughs> and and it's like when a dog like, takes a pill and then it starts going kind of, <laughs> and, and uh, after a few that, minutes she that's falls. Yes, oh, so. Oh yeah, and uh, that oh, but looks around and looks directly at Elang. Elang, all of a sudden the mist parts as this creature races toward you. And it is initiative. All right. And there was a third heartbeat that we did. It's undetermined, isn't it? Unless one of them has two hearts. Now that would be weird. Um, Mootly, your mic was muted when you Sorry. were talking. Sorry, as she, uh, she, as, as this creature comes rushing to her and kind of like, 
this is going to hurt. Uh, she kind of yells back behind her and goes, Magpie, your traumatic backstory has appeared. And just waits. Okay. It's a, So it's a nine, right? Yep, it's a nine. I failed. Yeah. I passed. I, All right. I could well, not have possibly failed. The, the, the expression is, you know, the dice giveth and the dice taketh. I rolled an 18, I rolled a 19. There's only one possible answer that could possibly happen in this one moment. Could you tell me what you think that one happens to be? <laughs> you Pass. rolled an intrusion? I did. Yes! Okay, so as that is charging for the lock, <laughs> it barrels into you instead. And so uh, that is currently facing you instead. So, uh, did anyone succeed besides Magpie? No. Or, I mean, I didn't. I, I wasn't even going to roll, but I was like, oh, I do have to give Steven an attempt at a GM intrusion. So, <laughs> so I did roll. Well, I got you covered there, Dave. <laughs> well, I so, mean, another does GM that mean intrusion. <laughs> so that means you're up, Magpie. You okay. see that racing for, towards you in werewolf form. It's fangs glistening in this moonlight that's been uh, manufactured in the hallway. You could not have given me a better moment if you had orchestrated this on purpose. Um, all right. So I am going to cease standing where I am standing. I am, like, one second I'm standing near the back of the group, and the next I am, like, right up in that space, like, immediately going for the throat to, like, throw him off of Keeper. Okay. Okay. Like, my eyes are all red, like, Iris is Sclera, like, completely just bloodshot all the way okay. across. Okay, so Magpie right, is going rolling? full vampire. Uh, it is a difficulty nine to hit that. Okay, speed? Uh, it is normally might, unless you have an ability that lets you use speed instead to attack. Uh, which I do not. Okay. Well, I mean, can't you use light weapons with speed instead of might? Uh, yes, you can if you have a light weapon. Oh, I do. I have my lantern. Okay. So I'm going to try to wrap that around his throat instead and, like, pull him. Okay. All right. So go ahead and make that roll. Use lantern okay, that clown. See. Light him up! <laughs> I am actually kind of liking my odds on this. Um, my dice roller is frozen. Oh no! The suspense! That's a bad it omen! at least once a week, and I really need to find a better one. So okay. would you say the suspense is killing us? <laughs> so that's gonna be 29 total. Hopefully not. 21 total. 29 total. 29! Okay, you succeed! So you get this lantern around his, around uh, that neck. Um, are you trying to like strangle that or are you I'm trying just trying to... to like pull him off. I know he doesn't need to breathe. Okay. All right. So you're trying to pull him off of Winda. And get you... his attention. Because okay, this so... showdown has to happen for my own peace of mind. So you catch that neck, just slipping the lantern around the mall, yank and the thing, ah! almost like a hurt dog, and then turns around, lands on all fours, and growls and sees you, and there's like this widening of recognition briefly, followed by a loud, ah! and it is that's turn, I believe. Let's go. Okay, so you need to defend with a difficulty of nine, and this is a speed defense. As the creature starts loping towards you and lunges with this almost supernatural speed. And what the rest of you see is like multiple images of the wolf superimposed with just how fast it's moving. 24. This clown vampire werewolf opens its maw to try to attack you. You rolled a 24. You mm -hmm. needed a 27 unless you okay. have, unless you have uh, shifts or anything like that that lower it. I mean, I already factored those in. Okay, so it's still a speed, so it's still 24. So the creature bites you, and you are already a vampire, so thankfully you're not at risk for turning into a vampire. Um, and you are going to take six 
might damage. Okay. With this bite. And uh, that is all because you're already a vampire. So the vampire and the werewolf just, they don't, they are contagious to you. So congratulations, you have an immunity to one of the things. <laughs> But you do recognize that with the saliva, it burns and it like sizzles a little bit on your skin. You recognize this is the same sort of thing that that would do to turn people into its thralls. So like right. it can still do that. Be careful not to let him bite you. And uh, next up we have everyone else. So who wants to go first? <laughs> I rolled a one, so I'm last. Have at it, folks. Well, I guess I'm the lines in. technically oh, in a certain... No, good. I was saying Elaine's technically in the room, so I, she's gonna like just be like, "No, that's my friend," and just like try and like bop that across the head. Okay, difficulty nine. Okay, so with an edge of ten, mm -hmm. that's three, two, five, seven nine so that brings it down four so we say ten nine eight seven so, all right so it's nine was it mm -hmm. so that brings it to six okay and then i'm going to spend yes you let us be tier four so this is what you've done with a leg and then <laughs> okay i'm going to spend super in it. another level of effort so it brings that to So it brings it down to five. Okay. Oh, the temptation, but I will not use it right now. Okay. All right. So oh, and be... Because I am specialist in heavy bashing now also, because she is a prodigy, so she gets to take one level in an ability that's a tier five ability. <laughs> uh -huh. So when it comes to heavy that's bashing, also another level. So it brings it down to four. So I've okay. got to hit a 12 to hit. So you need a 12 to hit. Okay. Uh, and that's a 14. Okay. So and long. now with her new level of damage, she does... 15, no, sorry, 16 points of damage. Okay. So uh, describe how you bloody that that quickly. Um, Alang turns around and goes, she is better than you. And then just like does her like jump flap, like superhero flights with my like wing turned into a fist thing and like bops that directly in the red clown nose. Okay. And the red clown nose kind of like splatters <laughs> with blood all over it. Okay. As she's standing, and then she like kind of like flaps back and stands behind Magpie, wanting Magpie to have the killing blow specifically. So she's okay. like in protective mode. You hear this wolf squeal as you feel crunching bone. Everyone hears this crunch. It's like sickening. It's almost like that visceral gut-wrenching crunch as the blood just, poof, just mingling with the face paint that's already there and disturbing, mingled in the matted fur. And the creature lets out this yip as it falls backwards and is lying on its back. So uh, next up, uh, Blowhard will blow hard and uh, just do one of his attacks. Okay. And uh, I'm really regretting having rolled that 15 on initiative now because I could have used that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. That's a 20. Oh, okay. yeah. So the best part is I get my points back. <laughs> okay. uh, so that would have done 10 points, but actually, what is the extra damage? Four? Four. Yes, four, four damage. All right, so I'm just going to do the extra four and do a total of 14. Okay. Nice. Describe how you take that out of the fight. <laughs> I, I think he, like, howls with pain. And um, as he does, uh, Blowhard blows directly into his snout. 
and his uh -huh. head just explodes on the back wall. Okay. So the head explodes on the back wall. Like an overinflated balloon. That has been taken out of the fight. Which means its special mechanic gets to activate. No! So, no. <laughs> you see the head splatters and the entire creature transforms into a flight of like were bats. <laughs> and they are now, you have four giant were bats that are now facing you. True sky so puppies. Okay, I'll wait until my turn, but I have a question, so I'm gonna put a pin in that. Okay. Nightlight, you're up. Okay, so I'm still standing in the door of her ship, the big room, it's all misty, and now there's bats flying around in it, right? Mm -hmm. Can I, but I can see, the, like, can I see these bats? Is it through the mist or fog? Yeah, you can see the bats. Oh. There's four okay. of them, and they're huge. They're like the size of a child. But their wingspan oh. is like an adult on each side. For That's scale. gross. Yeah, I'm just going to onslaught these things. Like those Filipino the... bats that are like the size of a person. Mm-hmm. There's no, no fancy stuff here. I'm just going to blast a uh, little light beam at the closest one. Okay. In fight. So what is it, a nine? It is a nine. All right. So let's see. Do I have anything? Else? No. Uh... I let's see, I can't spend a I well then I I, I miss. I cannot do it. Okay, so what did you do? I just tried to do my onslaught ability. Okay, which so is just like an attack. This I just laser beam fires from your hands. And when it does, I need you to make an intellect roll to perceive something. Alright. What's the difficulty? The difficulty is going to be an eight. All right. I don't have anything special. Uh, and you do have just... something special that gives you an asset, but I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. Mm. Just know you have something special that gives you an asset. Okay. <laughs> I... All right. Uh, well, I guess I hit the edge. So I'll spend a point. So I throw 18 or higher. Nope. only got a 15. Okay. All right. So uh, your, your special thing, by the way, was your knowledge of heroes in tandem with using a light power. Oh. So, yes. Uh, okay. Now we're at Winda. So you fired this laser and you did singe part of the wall. So you know that your attacks, your effects, damage the ship as well. So uh, Winda, so what are you doing? So there's bats around. Is there the third uh, heartbeat? Do we do we see who that was, or no, was that don't. not here? No, you right. don't. Uh, and Helsing is still snoozing. Yep, Helsing is snoozing. You can actually make a perception check if you want to. A roll, an intellect roll to perceive. Uh, it's crap. I have I have two to it, uh, but I rolled a five, so that would only cover a. Uh, difficulty for our difficulty three. Okay. Yep. Nope. Uh, so yeah, so you there's... don't perceive the other person yet. All right. Uh, there's there's these bats. I'm gonna basically try and do what uh, what Nightlight was doing. I'll onslaught the bats. Okay. Go ahead. Difficulty nine. So it brings it down to a five. And the die is back on the right side. It's an 18. Okay. All right. So uh, you blast the bats. You can actually get all of them in it with your onslaught. All right. That's seven, seven damage. Okay. Uh, so you blast these creatures with a <laughs> of just clouded, glowing green smoke. The bats are flying. You hear this coughing from these bestial creatures. <laughs> and uh, they're, they're still up, but they're like choking on this. So they've taken a lot of damage. And uh, it. now it's the end of the round. So uh, I'm going to roll my D5. Ilang. Speed defense um, roll, difficulty eight. And you have a hindrance. Wow, you know, I do. So it's difficulty nine. 
piece of cake. Just roll 27. <laughs> <laughs> piece of cake. Piece of I love cake. Cypher System. <laughs> Okay, uh, I cannot succeed. Say so you what? I can succeed. You can't. But okay. I'll roll just in case for a 20 or a 1, and it was a 15, so. Okay, so uh, the rest of you see a creature flicker from invisibility and from on top of the ceiling as it drops down. You see this wolf, it's skinnier than the others, it's a little bit shorter, and it has these eight spider legs coming out of its back. Mm. This is a werewolf version of the hero Anansi, okay. who jabs these uh, needle-like spindly spider legs all into Alan's back, dealing 16 might damage. Oh my goodness. She's not gonna like that, and you're gonna really not like okay, what I she have does. An armor of... Oh, you got armor? Armor of four. That helps. Nice. So you remove uh, four of that. Okay, so I take 12 points of damage. And it's my damage. Yep. That seems very specific. Uh, personally, it's that. Uh, I'm still up. Okay, so we're back up to Magpie. Magpie, okay. that has turned into bats. You've seen this happen before, though usually it's a bigger swarm of like a lot of little ones. This is new. Okay, so here's my logic, hear me out, right? Okay. Um, my sire is dead. Uh-huh. And I am the one child that kept my mind after like everything was said and done, which by my logic, it means I am now the master vampire. So I want to try to take control of the bats. Okay, okay. Uh, How do I do that? How do I make the attempt? Make an intellect roll. Okay. <laughs> the difficulty is still a nine, just like any other attempt for this. Okay. Um, can I... Hmm. I'm trying to think if I have anything that would count as an asset. Like... You do have you know, one thing being, that I'm a sucker for. Being familiar with the process. Uh, the power Yelling out what you're doing? Oh my god, okay, Because yeah. you have all of your friends all around you right now and you are doing this for them. That's I, an asset of two. That's fair. That is I'm absolutely I'm becoming the lord fair. of all vampires for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I am like overcome by the overwhelming desire to protect my friends mm. and actually do something heroic. Even though okay. I will never do this to them. We got it! We got her to say she's a hero! We got so that's that sufficiently to dark enough to be like borderline, though. You're like, you're to, to be okay. fair, she didn't say she was being a hero. She said she was doing something heroic. Right. Well, well something that could be perceived by Usually, others as heroic. <laughs> they will fight tooth and claw. Magpie will fight tooth and claw about being a hero. So this is a huge win. <laughs> oh, Elaine is just like flying there. Yeah, with the spider talons in her back, being pumped full of poison and pain, and it's just like, yeah. <laughs> I always knew you were a hero. Oh my god, you just like you just twist that knife a little harder. Um, <laughs> I would also like to spend. What is it? Edge. E you spend from your pool. You spend from okay, yes, then I will do that. I will absolutely do that. Let's go. I will spend from my pool. I will take that damage. <laughs> Hit points are a resource. Okay. The edge reduces the cost of that. I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. You can you can reduce it up to four because four times. Four. Yeah. Uh, it okay, depends so upon what your effort is. You can spend um, three effort, which costs a total of seven points minus whatever whatever your edge is in intellect. Okay. And cube that. <laughs> Divide so, by two. Given all that math, is a 19 gonna do it? <laughs> uh, did you did you spend yes. three levels of effort? Then, then absolutely. All right. So do you describe how you envision this looking to them? Okay. So like, um, Magpie extends a hand and 
it, there's kind of like a moment where the bats are like jerking around in the sky because they're still kind of dazed from what was going on. But like mm-hmm. after a beat of this, they kind of turn and move to attack the other side instead. Okay. They're still all dazed and stuff though, because I can't fix that. I can okay. change their alignments, not their status conditions. Okay. So, uh, you, uh, what you experience is this tutum as you feel your heartbeat synchronize with theirs briefly as it starts up just for a second. And you feel your mind synchronize with them as images flicker and flash. And it's very jarring almost as you see through their senses, hear through their senses, feel through their senses. You go from flying up above to being on the ground, to flying up above to being on the ground. Colors shift and reverse. And then they all, suddenly all the bats swarm on Anansi or where Anansi. Can I feel the presence of my hospital children as well? You can, in fact. Cool. They are off saving the hospital. Awesome. Good job. I'm proud of you all. (laughs) And uh, you, you have the bats now attacking this creature. So I can get, I'm going to have you make an attack roll with the bats. Cool. And basically, to hit Anansi, you have to roll a 16 or better on the die. I have been having wonderful luck on the dice all day, and now I roll the four, which is fitting and reasonable. Okay. (laughs) You see that these uh, poisoned spider leg needles that were in Elang's back, covered in blood, start whacking away the bats almost effortlessly. And uh, you see this uh, teenage uh, werewolf rises. The uh, one of the goggles broken. The once the mask that once covered the whole face is now shredded part way off, to allow for the muzzle to come through with this like these long fangs that are dripping with green venom. And uh, it turns to you, Magpie, seeing that you did something to the bats. And now it gets to fall into the initiative order. So uh, Anansi is going to go after Magpie. So Magpie, make a defense roll. Difficulty eight, it's speed defense. 27. 27, holy smokes. Yeah, you are good. You, uh, You nimbly move out of the way. Your super vampire powers are causing you to move almost like a horror movie creature at this point through the mist, taking advantage of the moonlight. And just one minute, the moonlight flickers and you're in one place, then you're in another. As the creature is disoriented, swiping these bladed spider legs every which way and failing to hit you. And next up we have who of everybody else? Elang went first last time. Elang, you are hurting. Can I, guys, before, before you guys go, could I, it's not that very good in a fight, could I use my scan ability mm-hmm. to sort of like keep a scan on this Anansi werewolf and give my allies some kind of asset on their stuff by like just, you know, keeping track of where they are in the mist and room as they move about? You can absolutely do that. You guys watch, well, unless you want to describe it, Doug. Yeah, it's sort of just like uh, painting him with a laser aimer, you know what I mean? Except it's actually like a light that just keeps track on him and just lights, a, you know, just a scanning light so I can kind of keep track of his status or, or their status. I don't know much about them, but uh, where they're at in the room get... and just be calling out Ying like, Yang no, these over there. It's or... like an asset. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Ying Yang suddenly gets an asset to attack because there's a laser pointer. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about Yang Yang. Yeah, he leaps from behind me. Yep. So you see uh, this scanning light is now just going up and down over Anansi, making uh, his uh, invisibility power impossible to use now. Okay, cool. So uh, they can no longer use their invisibility. And uh, we are up to who? So, Linda, Blowhard. So I don't um, know if you guys, uh, you know, are, are, are feeling fighting, you know, uh, the werewolf, were spider, monster, uh, but I can I can try to look through the, the porthole and send them out there uh, rather than rather than fighting. 
Uh, so I discussed uh, en route here that if I say rutabaga, to, to kind of pull away from, you know, the enemy. And I call that out and right underneath Anansi's feet, <laughs> the wormhole, you know, kind of opens up and, you know, winds up sucking him out towards the, uh, towards the middle of space where there's no gravity. Okay. So uh, this whirlwind <laughs> surrounds Anansi and blows them towards this wall. And just as the werewolf is about to hit the wall, it <clears throat> into smoke and appears outside. And now the the werewolf is looking around, just grabbing for what it can grab it. Nothing. It's gone for the moment. It is out of the fight. So you have that on your side. You have Vanessa Helsing dealt with. You can move on if you want. I reckon we need to tie this one up and uh, make sure that it's contained in some way, shape, or form. I ha- I do have handcuffs. I don't know that they're going to work, <laughs> but I do have them. Well, we still had the the other heroes in the sh- in our ship, right? I mean, they can kind of stay here and protect the LZ. Mm-hmm. Um, Elaine oh. suggests to Robin, uh, sorry, I'll suggest to Magpie that maybe we should pat them down and see if they have any goodies. Probably a good idea. No. Uh, being an experienced pickpocket, I will assist with that. Okay. So- while while uh, Magpie is, is searching, did we discuss, like, is there a cure? Are these, are these entirely monsters now with no, no salvage? I don't know, it's we do. psychological yeah. trauma. There's, it's not something that we're going to just cure flat out, but we're, you know they can do therapy. Right. Well, a Nazis was a hero, and they're gonna they're gonna die out there. I I could. Yeah, I the could vital signs this, are dropping quickly. <laughs> I could I could toss this one out there right too, here. but again, it was a hero, and I, I think it's. I think we're in a, I think we're we we're into horror movie territory here, Winda. I mean, I hate to say it, but I mean these are vampires and werewolves that are trying to take over the vampiric werewolves trying to take over the earth. I, I don't I don't know if there's coming back from that. As long as we have them contained, they deserve their shot at getting better. Sure. Well, yeah. that, that that's why you know kind of. Make sure I, I do have a dog lock. These are werewolves from session two. I could lock her up with that. I'll pull it out of my, I'll be like, hey, I still have this thing for locking up dogs. They're werewolves. Can't hurt to try. And I'll just slap We've it got a big her. enough chamber to throw them all in, then that would be amazing. I don't even remember what it was. Why don't we just, it was in just the some cipher up. type thing that locks up dogs permanently. Like, it was right. what kept the hot dog locked up. And so the dog I'm, catcher I'm going... just follows around as we knock people out. Yeah, get that one. <laughs> Does that I'm do literally... anything, Steven? I mean, um, what was that thing? So I, I want you to make a retroactive intellect roll for technology and dealing with technology and sure. engineering and all that. I, I am skilled, no less, in engineering. Okay. So whatever it is, is two less. What's the difficulty? Your difficulty is going to be a six. So it's four, so I gotta roll 12 or better. All right, so while he's looking Team. at this, I'm gonna pull okay. up my uh, my pixelated healing potion and drink it. All right, so you pull out this pixelated healing potion, you drink it, and it's weird because instead of just emptying like liquid, you see that in pixels, <laughs> the pixels. It, do, 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 and you yeah. just feel it going down your gullet, even though there are these blocky pixels going into your mouth. And it's like weirdly sandy and liquid at the same time. Um, kind of gritty. And uh, is it high res or is it like real big chunks of it? It's like oh, eight bit, chunks. right? So that, yeah, it's big chunks. Yeah, it's eight. Yeah, we're 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 eight bit kind of kind of stuff. <laughs> uh, so I recover all my spent speed so far. Sixteen bits, so much smoother. So uh, night light. During the course of the trip up here, you were so adept with the technology just thoughts occurred to you about how to amplify what you already took from the dog catcher. And you messed with it a little bit. And when you slap it down, you have a veritable kennels worth of 
four containments. sealed containments just lined up in a block. Oh, wow. That was only last for 24 hours, as I recall. So whatever mm-hmm. we do here, we got to be back within a day. But this should keep Vanessa Van Helsing and any other werewolfized heroes we find under wraps. Mm-hmm. Well, that does uh, make the doing the heroine part better. Yeah. Sorry, Nancy. It's just... <laughs> and before we go, I'm going to leave a sensor on our ship, which is just like a sort of holographic little glowing orb that any time for the next day I could just sort of see and perceive through it. Okay. So I keep Arnold say, Arnold, if anything goes wrong, just I, I can see and hear you through this little hologram here. All right. Uh, public. Hey, thanks for driving us here, by the way. You've been, <laughs> you know, you're, you're an unsung hero. Hey, I wouldn't say unsung. You've sung, you sung his praises quite a bit. Eh, who am I? I'm just a <laughs> humble citizen. Well, uh, hopefully after this, we were all sung heroes. Yeah. Here, here. So Alain this looks, mess. looks Arnold in the eye. I just do it said, for the lulls. It's about family. And it is. Makes an awkward Fast and Furious riff. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was about saving the whole planet. So this uh, mess, is it coming family. from vents? Is it just there? Like... It seems to just be here. It's almost like it's a part of the ship's atmosphere. When um, Nightlight can't analyze things, did he get any information from the mist? Um, he got where the vent, yeah. where the ventilation system is. And that it's like moonlight infused mist. Mm-hmm. Are yeah, there it's moon any, mist. Are there any access terminals or you know data ports or any of that kind of stuff to kind of tap into and see if we can figure anything out? There is. Oh, you have to make it through one more room to get there. <laughs> all right, so ah. we'll see you. Excellent. Uh, all right, shall we? Uh, shall we continue on here? Well, Linda, between me and you and our our, our wind-based powers, what if we crack those canisters and blow them through the ventilation? You'd all lose your powers too. Not if we send it away from us. So, as you guys ponder that, who's opening the door? I will. Okay. So you walk across this field of like extra escape pods and ships to a door. You Noted. push the button and it open. And let's see. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So, um, you go into the next room and the moonlight here is flickering and it's like, it's less flickery and it's stronger, but it's also filtered through plants. Okay. That have overgrown this chamber. There are plants everywhere. Um, they look alien in nature Hmm. and it's like you're stepping into a forest, but it's a big open room. You have no idea how big the room is because it's such a dense forest. Is it like humid, you know, like a like a uh, rainforesty kind of vibe or what? It's like a cold almost winter sort of oh. uh, temperate zone forest. Okay. So temperate rainforest um, is found in Tasmania. Ooh, interesting. <laughs> um, um if I mean, if I have any, you know, t- thing to do, I would definitely scan what I see in front of me. That's my okay. gonna be my MO. So you scan four heartbeats. We got four more in here, guys. Uh, before a thing follows, she's gonna spend an action to make a recovery roll. Okay. Roll the four. All right. We don't, we so, don't have five, uh, do we? We don't have any way to do fire, do we? I could heat things up in here. I mean, heat's just a manipulation of light waves. 
I'm all for burning some of these plants so that they're not yeah. and strangling us for sure. Oh, Katie's, yeah. Katie's eyes flicker over Anna Langs and says, fire in space is really bad. And on planes is really bad. And on boats, oh, oh, fire, fire is bad. Oh, there's a lot of metal. I don't think it's going to spread. I just said I could raise the temperature. Yeah. Fire's actually just the excitation of molecules. You see, when they, Winda, you know this, right, from chemistry class. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> so uh, you did notice, you picked up actually, that one of the heartbeats was moving steadily closer to you, like at a walking pace. But I can't see anything? Um, you can't right now. But you hear something coming through the forest plants. Well, I'll I'll take some of that mist on again and uh, you know distort me a little bit. Uh, if I got to make a speed roll, might as well have a free asset. Mm-hmm. Um, Hello. Does anyone not want to destroy the planet? You know, not kill your family and friends. Or you know, just be nice. Yeah, diplomatic. Bro. We have some that. lovely uh, kennels you can stay in for the next twenty-four hours while we oh. dismantle your plan. Oh, Ilan, <laughs> make an intellect roll to have a pleasant interaction. Um, I like it. Way to go. The difficulty here is going to be a three. Because you hit exactly the right button. <laughs> with your words. It's a natural 20. <gasps> okay. <laughs> so not only do you trigger this? I'm going to immediately let you know who it is. This wolf form steps out and you see a woman wearing, um, it's it's weird because it looks almost like if a 1970s style uh, hippie also dressed in a very formal sort of white robe. Um, and lots of beads and carrying a staff but a werewolf. And so the clothes are still pretty tattered. Um, and uh, she comes out and you hear this deep guttural wolf voice say, uh, I once cared for the planet, but my eyes have opened. There are so many more beyond ours. Ours is inconsequential and is merely part of the food chain. And you recognize this is Silvermoon, ironically, who is a uh, druid uh, supervillain who's a, uh, like, uh, you know, plants over people sort of yeah, yeah. hero or villain, excuse Alain, me. He's the, uh, Alain, he's the speech and goes, well, and she like kind of cracks her neck. And she goes, I see you seem like a bit of a vegetarian. I <laughs> so we we here are looking to thwart these here plans so as you can see we've already gone through some some of you folk are from our world so we'd like to not have to make this messy but mind you we have no problems should we have to do so neither do I says another voice and it also sounds very guttural and you now see it's so weird it's like a maned wolf in a torn up pinstripe suit hmm. and it's holding a gun right at you and bang 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 fires like almost like warning shots just right at your toes and uh I would say Nightlight definitely recognizes this guy. Um, this is the drug lord and uh, half lion splicer um, turned werewolf. So now like, I don't know how much is human in there. Uh, called <laughs> Regent. What's his name? Regent. Okay. Um, basically the standard super strength, super healing, yeah. super speed, all that kind of stuff. Just generally better at everything. Hmm, okay. But also likes guns and has no problem shooting people because he was a villain. <laughs> right. So are there are there windows in this room? There are not because they are covered up with plant life. There's just a window in this room. Uh-huh. 
see. What a weird place to put a forest. I grew it myself. Yeah, I think I'm going to fix this. Um, I'm going to pop a pill. Okay, you pop a pill. And uh, as oh. you pop the pill, um, you have uh, Silver Moon fires a beam of moonlight from this crystal headed staff towards you guys. And I need everyone to make a uh, speed defense check. All right. Multi eight for her. You guys already fought the really hard people. This She's the next worst, hardest one, so. <laughs> yes. Is that a speed? Uh, yep, speed. All right. Uh, so with, with all the things going on right now, that brings it down to a two for me. Okay. I, I can get it down to a six. Nope. Failed. Okay. But only barely. All right. So those of you who fail find yourselves bewitched by this silvery moonlight. And you see Magpie, because you've succeeded, you see sparkles over the eyes of those who were hit by this beam. And those of you who were hit by the beam and failed, your, your mother is standing before you. And her enemies are at your side. Hmm. Okay. Dang it, I totally overspent on that one. It sucks. Did you fail? No, I've got a 19. Oh, well, that's good, right? Is it only rolling a 20 that gives you your points back? Yes. Yes. Uh Uh-huh. So, uh, yeah. uh, At this point, um, you guys are going to roll initiative, but it's against each other. Okay. Can I just state, like, that the spell tries to hold on a lang? Mm Mm-hmm. But the fact that she doesn't think that her mother would be afraid of anything and could like fight anything off with a um, well-placed kitchen item um, that it doesn't stick for that reason. Hmm. I'll give you an asset to defend against it. I totally beat a six. I mean, not a six, uh, a two. I totally beat a two. (laughs) Okay. I beat a five. Are we rolling initiative here? Yeah. Yeah. I. Oh, uh... <laughs> I beat it two. Out to twenty six and bad at reverse math. I've got okay. like yeah, I, I only got a eight. It's and then I've got a hindrance, so it makes the six. So I. Okay. Two. I beat seven, so I think they go first again. Okay. Or at least so, they go before uh... me. Duh. And then you said Magpie got what? You beat an eight. Twenty-six. Oh, they beat oh. an eight. Okay. Magpie. Okay. So, uh, Magpie, you are actually going to go first in this situation. Okay. Um. So I see their eyes are all sparkly. Uh huh. Um. Okay, whose eyes are the most? Sparkly. <laughs> um, do you guys want to answer that? The most sparkly? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like who is the most taken in by this? I am not sparkly at all. Not I. Oh, am I the only one who failed that check? Oh, I guess it's just Nightlight. Uh. Johnny Silver was an orphan. He doesn't, he doesn't have a mom. Oh. <laughs> Nightlight's eyes are already sparkly. And, and the Nightlight. Nightlight well. sees, um,. Uh, a lang munching on one of his mum's pinwheels. Mm. They're good. Oh. I know you eat like carry on, 
But you're gonna you're gonna get sick. If yes, you but eat, these pinwheels keep are eating those pinwheels because they're from this. <laughs> I think they're from the same night. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like fatty deli meats, <laughs> processed. Look, so yeah, there's a reason why I grabbed sparkly. one. Steven smashed me. Uh, I'm gonna pinch him. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, go ahead and make a defense uh roll with that eight again. Me? Uh huh. I rolled an eight, so failed miserably. Okay, so you <laughs> pinch him and it doesn't seem to do anything. Oh. Ow! Mom, this lady's trying to pinch us to death. And he says mom, so now all of you know. He sees Silvermoon as his mom. Mm. Your mom makes delicious, delicious pinwheels. She does. So, can you could you send the bats after uh, the Silver Moon? Could I send the bats after Silver Moon? Sure. Bats. Okay, make an attack roll. Bats. <laughs> Creatures of the night. The bats. It's oh, the gosh. So the bats only have to hit a four to hit her, because they're much better at things than you but guys. I am. <laughs> yeah. Um, 13. Okay, you succeed. So describe what the bats do. They just descend upon her like my flock of bloodlings. Okay. Your flock of bloodlings. Revenge yes. of Terra Earth Nature. And they, uh, start... I gasp in horror. Silver Moon howls and yips and screeches in her werewolf form as she tries to fight off the bats. And you hear, I feel so conflicted. <laughs> and, uh, so, we'll say that I causes mean, her to drop concentration <laughs> on the ability controlling Nightlight. <laughs> so Nightlight, you aren't controlled anymore. That's not your mom. Get that's... her, Vance! <laughs> so, I know it's definitely a good idea because we know vampires don't like sparkly things, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> this vampires one sure doesn't. Sparkly things. Real vampires don't sparkle. There's <laughs> real vampires? There's the hot take for I the love, night, everybody. You know, unless you I've been at the club enjoying I, some glitter, don't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what is Winda doing? Uh, isn't the bad guy's turn? Uh, no, in fact, because she's lost concentration and Regent doesn't seem to be doing anything right now. <laughs> so they're not looking for a fight? Like, they're not making aggressive motions? Mm-mm. She was trying to control your minds. Didn't work. So... You know what? I'm I'm just gonna you know I'm these guys not only are werewolves but they're villains. So like I don't feel in any way, shape, or form bad about trying to put them down. So I'm totally just okay. gonna 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 blast. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna just decide who who I'm gonna attack. Uh, one through five is gonna be the the druidus. Six through ten is the other. All right, I'm, okay. I'm attacking the the mob boss, dude. Okay. It was just kind of like an awkward moment where we're all just like. Should we fight now? <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, weird, so right? <laughs> what's his uh what's his difficulty? His difficulty is a five. He's a five. Oh, He's a five. You guys fought the strong ones first. You have sure. all the spectrum all right. here. I mean I I, I that br it brings it down to a to a to a Three down, one twenty-five so I rolled, to go. I rolled an eleven. An so eleven? Makes, okay. Seven points of damage. Okay, he's bloodied. So you hit him with this on is it onslaught? Yeah, onslaught. So just a blast of a uh, you know smoky, hazy uh, wind, and it's like, you know, we told you guys to give up, but I got no problems throwing down. So blasty blast. So he he's choking and stuff, but he's trying really hard not to move. You make and, that look like a breeze, Winda. Uh, at this point, uh, we have. Uh, Elan. Elan just looks at Silver Moon and says, You have the trade of time. And I, on behalf of nature, 
And then she looks at Ying Yang. Like, okay. Yeah, I need to <laughs> fuck you up. And, and then she just like smacks her in the face. Okay. So we're like just flying punch, make an attack roll. Her difficulty's an eight, Ooh. so. Okay. So. One, two, three. So that brings it down. Six. No, twelve. And then a specialist in heavy. Bang. See. Lothy Abacus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she beats that, and with all her stupid ability, uh, that is a fifteen in points and damage. Okay, fifteen. Describe how you take her out of the fight. Uh, Aleng says, I am the Captain Planet, and then just smacks her in the face. <laughs> <laughs> and you hear this yip as there's a little bit of a crunch, and the dog just flips and falls to the ground. So the werewolf lady is down. Like Meg Ryan. Her voice sounds suspiciously like Meg Ryan as she goes through. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Deep, like Captain Planet Deep Cut. <laughs> so, four heartbeats were detected in here, but we've only seen two individuals this right. far. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn, you know, because um, we came through like the door, and I imagine there's walls. It's all walls to either side of the mm -hmm. doorway. So, I want to turn towards one of one of those, either right or left. It doesn't really matter. And as long as my allies aren't there. I'm gonna do my push attack where I'm just gonna blow and push everything away from me. Okay. Except for except for wind, it's all fire. Okay. Oh, that's right, you have that elemental thing. Yeah, right? so you just... So I want to try and just completely clear, like scrape everything away so we see all like ship. Because I know okay. window wants windows. Okay. Make a roll. That difficulty will be a six. The plate. No. All right. I will spend three. And that will do it because that uh, gets it down three, nine, 14 on the die. Okay. So, uh, you and the, and the planes just evaporate out the, out the one section. And it's the end of the round. You don't see anything right there because they're up near Regent at this point. And, and now that it's the end of the round, he can do his thing, snaps his fingers, and prowling out from the plants on either side are two full-grown lions that you would know he keeps his pets. Um. So, they're just regular lions, though. They haven't been yep, like, they're like just regular lions. or anything. No, nope, they're just regular lions. Okay. So uh, now we're back up to Magpie again. I can't fight a lion. I like animals. So what are you gonna do? Um. Do you got a spray bottle? Cats. I'm okay. So we still have like <laughs> some of the food that we got from. Uh, Nightlight's mom. Uh huh. I throw meat. Okay. All right. Uh, make a uh, intellect roll to try to deal with animals. I'm at one. <laughs> okay. You pull out the meat, and the lions charge for you, seeing the yeah, meat. Yeah. That's about right. <laughs> you now smell like meat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Robin, I forgot I, I have a pocket full of lunch meat. Rob, and I love you, but I know that, uh, you know, trying to uh, ward off trained animals, that's not usually going to go well. So, uh, I also want you to make an, uh, no, just call higher low. Call higher low for me. Happens Hi, this time. I rolled a natural 20. Woo! So... The lions charge for you and stop as Regent snaps his fingers again. 
And he walks toward you guys. I've already been half beast my whole life. I think I have a little more control than the rest of them on the ship. But uh, dogs aren't my thing. I'm a cat person. <laughs> on top, on top. <laughs> I got yin yang next to me. <laughs> he, he he looks at your offer of mm. a five and then just gives it to you anyway. You know, kind of daps it out and then uh, he walks up to the two lions, strokes them, and he looks at all of you and says, "Go on." But I know you're trying to get to that room over there, and he gestures to an area that's labeled ventilation system. There's a couple in there you need to watch out for. Do you know who it is? The brothers. The cyborgs. That light? I mean, I I, I don't know in real Um, life. (laughs) So you would gather, because he said brothers and cyborgs, it's Uh probably burnout and chill out. Oh, okay. They are two speedsters, one ice-themed and one fire-themed. Oh, that's Hot Dog's owner. Uh-huh. Hot Dog's okay. dad. Okay, we have we have an Eden. And Regent just walks out the door if you let him with his lions in tow. I mean, we might be blowing up this ship or something, right? He's going to oh, where wow. the kennels are. Oh, okay, great. Um, Alain gives him a pan- recruitment pamphlet for the carnivores uh, <laughs> uh, team. Goes and pulls out a dead raccoon out of nowhere and gives it to the cats. I was wondering what that smell was. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that smell. <laughs> I mean, I should have put two and two together. But... <laughs> yeah, Lord. Experience. Experience for both of you. That was great. Amazing. Um, and so you guys approach the vent room. Great. Uh, so who's opening? Can the door? you make like a hologram of hot dog and send it through first? Uh, yeah, I totally can do that. Do you guys want me to make an illusion? I'll just make it as you like, just right. I mean, I can just do it all day long, like it, this and like this and like this. If we're like, going to the, if we're going to the vent room, should we make a fire, Janasi? <laughs> Whoa, man, <laughs> that's like a multi-layered Meta joke. joke. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's prin- from prince our very man, first private. campaign. Yes. He's a prince now. Yes, it was a royally good pun. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I could totally do that. Maybe it will tug on him. his heartstrings a little bit too, baby. What do we want to do? Distractive. Yeah. Okay. I can so, do that. Uh, while we're doing this, I will. Uh, I will take my my new shift. We're getting near the end of this uh, this thing. Use all this, all the ciphers I can. Okay. Oh yeah. All right. Uh, so you know you... what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna uh, put on my mask and look like a uh, blowhard werewolf. Hmm. Okay. okay. I've had this thing forever and have not used it yet. So. Okay. So you look like you've been turned into a werewolf, and you, your veins are pulsing and pounding now as you take this shift. You feel. Your power's augmented, everything just coursing through you. It's wild. Your senses are heightened. Colors are more vivid. It's it, it's so intense. And uh so, What did you do? Uh, are you I making took, a hot dog? I took the new shift, the one that doesn't have uh, a uh, a drawback. Uh, okay, so no crash for you. Yep, no crash for me, just an acid on everything. Oh. So yeah, I'm just gonna make a hologram of hot dog and I just, just have it like walk into the middle of the, the room as I'm not uh, uh, from the doorway. Uh, what are these like doors that are like shh, shh, 
sort of thing? Yep. Like, mm -hmm. Are they one side or from the middle? From the middle. Oh, okay. So, so maybe uh, just, a, you know, like, and just stand, like, on the side of it and just send a hot dog in. Like, I don't know what the plan was beyond that, but we'll see what happens. Make an intellect roll. All right. What's the difficulty? Six. Uh, to deceive or to dis okay. use well, technology. Uh, I mean, I am skilled with optics and, you know, in the sense of, like, I can control my light to make it look pretty close to what I'm trying to do with my illusions. Does that help? Sure. All right. So I think it's going to go four. And that's a success. Beat it by okay. two. Okay. All right. So... The and just the light in. behaves like I have observed it behaving. The dog prances in, and at first you hear this icy shoosh. Okay. And then it stops. And even though this chill is like rushing from the doors in the darkness, you then see a blue light start burning like a, like a lighter. Okay. Um, uh, when I see that, I'm going to use my fire and ice ability to make the hologram of hot dog become very hot. Okay. Just as, I don't know, maybe they're like examining it and it's like, that's what my idea of hot dog mm -hmm. is. It turns hot. So I'm going to turn my hologram hot. Yeah. You actually see the, uh, the, this cyborg werewolf with this fire blasting through uh one of the eyes okay the cybernetic eyes specifically and it, it, the cyborg kneels and reaches out and pets where hot dog is oh well he would suffer three points of ambient damage that ignores armor it okay but, i mean that's what that power does okay i don't know if he's and immune to fire but like, it's, yeah. um he, he is immune to fire, actually. Okay, so, sure. um, so he's just petting the dog. And then another cyborg steps out. And you see, like, this icy mist coming out of the eye of that one. And they have, are the opposite eyes. And like, oh, the okay, werewolf it's looks at the other one. Is, like, is that... She found us. I dare you do this to my feelings. And, and then I'll, I'll, I'll whisper to my friends, like, okay, whatever step two is, do it. <laughs> and they're both just petting the dog, and you see this tear come out of the biological eye of each one. Mm. And then. How many they points both is turn emotional damage? The door. Huh? Come on, man, How get him! emotional damage. <laughs> <'em. laughs> How many points? Emotional damage. <laughs> um. They, they both look to where you guys are. And then they look at the hot dog hologram. You know my dog. We saved your dog. We like your dog. Dog is down uh, on the planet fighting against the invasion that you are now a part of. We also know invasion. your boyfriend. Looks, looks like you care. You very, very much. So, you could always come back, join us. While he's talking to him, I'm going to use mind reading to see if I, what, what they're thinking. Okay. It's uh, just the surface thoughts of a creature in short range. That so I can both see. of them are a bit skeptical, but also both of them has a, have a hazy mind about them, like, hmm. like they remember this past life where they were part of this planet they're now on. They're, they're sieging. I'll tell you what then, since uh, my illusion power is just free and I can do it all, all day long, knowing this, I'll have Hot Dog, like while he's still with them, sort of like, just because I can change it, you know, mm -hmm. as a, just part of controlling it. Just have it like change to look like Tracy Columbus and like, okay. you know, the their, their tower that we now occupy, but like what it used to look like then and just crap like mm -hmm. that, just sort of like going through those things. Okay. As I'm sort so, of like okay. passively scanning. I would line. love like to when use a player intrusion and use my one XP points 
And uh-huh. Elaine pulls out her mobile phone and just by happenstance happens to play the love song between Tracy Columbus <laughs> and Burnout. Okay. And kind of hold it in the air like a boombox. <laughs> like, yeah. like, uh, <laughs> like uh, what's that movie? Say anything? Oh, yeah. I'm going to have... <laughs> Trying to break through the haze with the power of love. Yes. Ted, roll... Is it stronger than alien werewolf indoctrination? To, to convince I mean. or persuade or have a pleasant interaction. And you right. have three assets based on what's going on right now. All right. And then I have my additional asset from the shift. Uh-huh. All right, so four. What is my difficulty? Your difficulty started at a five. Okay, so it's down to a one. Basically, so don't just... roll a lower than a three. <laughs> I rolled a three. <laughs> Meets beats. <laughs> wow. So they both kind of look at you and you sense this skepticism nightlight from them Mm -hmm. in their minds this guy that they don't know is just talking to them and why does he know so much why is he in their business but because you guys inspired us to to, (laughs) you're the reason we're here with the music with the images it all sort of melts away that skepticism Hmm. to where they believe his words what's the range on your wormhole ability (laughs) Uh, it only, it only yeah, gets out the long range. So I think we got through to him. Kill him. If we're in the upper atmosphere, I don't think I could send them down to the planet. Okay. Uh, like I, I'm just, I'm being completely level and frank. Like I'm yeah. not trying in any way, shape, or form to like sound like I'm trying to <laughs> manipulate them. Like I just want to, like just lay it on the line of like, look, you obviously care. You know this, this means something to you. That's what I'm trying to yeah. kind of tap into. Okay. You see, while Chill Out's tears have frozen and have kind of stopped, mm. uh, Burnout still has the tears coming from the one eye. And he looks at you and, uh, and he says, it's like remembering a dream. Well, there's always ways to come back from dreams. There's always ways to kind of get back to what was. You've been gone a long time and the world has definitely been at a loss. For those that, that left. And I know you left to, to do something right. And while you've been gone, others have had to step in. But you're back. Even if you're slightly different, you're still you. We can help you find that which is in you. So um, at this point, I'm gonna let you make a roll, but I wanna give everybody else a chance to contribute here sure, because sure. it's a very difficult role. Sure. So does anyone want to intervene or otherwise contribute in this moment in some way? I would like to say that this song specifically is Hoover Stank's The Reason. Um, <laughs> just to be like, and you're the reason while Tracy's like patting hot dog in an illusion um, <laughs> of trying, again, the power of love. Okay. All right. This very important moment use my automatic success as an asset instead of using it an automatic success. Okay. So uh, I will let that count for two assets for this role. Um, Dave, how is Blowhard contributing or is he contributing? I don't think Blowhard would contribute in a helpful way to this kind of interaction. <laughs> <laughs> like he would try, but he would just make it worse. So he's just standing there awkwardly like, I don't know. Dude. Okay. <laughs> so what about Nightlight? I think he would uh, m- mention a very specific like you know, the scenario that he'd saw them in before, you know, before they had disappeared. And, and that's, you know, like when they disappeared, like, and you know, I, I knew you guys weren't around and that's why I had to, you know, 
be a hero like you guys inspired me to be and protect like my neighborhood and stuff. And that's, you know, that's why I'm here right now. Because of the example that uh, you set. And what about Magpie? Just think about how awesome it's going to be to howl at the moon with your dog. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ted. Yes. The difficulty started at a seven. Okay. You have four assets. <laughs> that brings it down to a three. Uh-huh. I have one. That brings it down to a two. Right, mm-hmm. and then I will spend a level of uh, of effort. Um, no, nah, screw it. I'll spend two levels of effort. And okay, just succeed. Okay, <laughs> yeah. So the power of hot dog. With tearful eyes, burnout looks at you and says, "It's the lights." with whatever they injected us with in this ship, the AIs, they they gave us something and it turned us into these things. But the lights are what permanize it. Mm. And, it's, and so. immediately your chemical brain starts working, going a mile a minute. And you suspect given the way that he begins explaining the way it works in like deep, deep science talk that I am just not going to even try (laughs) right now (laughs) because it would just be like pseudoscience anyway. Techno babble. (laughs) In techno babble speak, your brain starts racing and you realize in theory, based on how this chemical from that works, Mm -hmm. if you could release it and destroy the lights, you might have a chance at saving the heroes and turning them back and the villains, everyone. Oh. But it's gonna require someone who can destroy a lot of lights really quick. Do you wanna do that? Who That's can terrible. Spread this uh this gas through all the ventilation systems. Well, we can definitely get, you know, some wind-based powers to spread things quickly and I'm guessing we not only have a specialist in 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 breaking stuff too we've got a prodigy at it that's true but I'm not very quick at it uh I was I was looking more on uh you know someone who's good at dealing with lights might be able to wait how would you want to get rid of all the lights though (laughs) because the lights I'm I'm, I'm just I don't know (laughs) That's terrible. Uh, so, <laughs> the thing that turns light. night light evil to the dark side. <laughs> How you dare you move lights? <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> I'm joining the Kavarians. Well, I mean, you know, that was certainly a thought. Uh, but so I just, you know, kind of share what's going on and we hopefully can hash out a, a, a plan to make this work. So uh, I guess uh, I, I guess the boys are gonna crack a couple cold ones. So uh, how are you going to deal with this then? Um, so so we're guess, in the ventilation room, so we got that on lockdown, right? We yeah. So I, if we can have a Lang, Nightlight, and Magpie kind of opening them up, and then like me and Winda will and Blowhard and Winda will stand in a way that we can be pushing the gas into the ventilation system away from everybody. Now, yes, well, they're uh, doing that too uh, with the lights, so we have to do that simultaneously, is it? Mm-hmm. Or, or, or in addition to that? Yep. Is there any... Uh, you know what? I will use my alien spaceships for dummy slave, which I never actually officially use. Uh-huh. Let's see where there might be some sort of access to the lighting system. And I want to mess muck with that. Okay. Um, I'm going to roll happenstance. Sure. And I have a thing I want to try. But I'm I- not kidding. I rolled another natural 20. That's so wild. Is that good, so is it good or it's bad? It's good. You, okay. you <laughs> find the circuit breaker tied to just system. the lighting. And now yep. you can over, 
You can't, you well, can't overcharge I, it so they all blow at once. Oh, I was going to actually see, you know, I mean, I know a lot of uh, actual optics. Now, it must be something in the wavelength of light that's doing that. Maybe I could even, like, change that so it weakens them mm -hmm. in a certain, like, in a new kind of light. Like, like the red sun? The You're going to red sun them? Yeah, basically. Okay. Like, well, if they're getting their power from this wavelength of light, just make it different than that. Okay. Hi. Oh. In this case, uh, I got plenty of intellect to pour into this one. My shining moment of changing light itself on a spaceship. Best believe a pour oh, yes. all the pool I can into that. Um, <laughs> in fact, uh, this is now going to be a complex test. All right. So everyone's going to roll. You're diff you get to choose what ability you use and how you contribute with this. Okay. So might, speed, or intellect. And uh, your difficulty is going to start at a seven. Okay. So we're going to start with Dave and work our way around. Oh, how wow. are you this... helping with this? All right. Well, I'm using my wind powers, so I'm going to use might because that's what they're based off of. Okay. And you said the difficulty seven? To start, yes. To start. Um, and the only thing I can do is spend effort. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'll bring it down by four, which will cost me six points. Six. Uh, so, okay. that's, so now that's a three that I have to be in, I guess. And uh, da, da, da. oh no! Oh, that's an eight on the die. I missed it by one. You missed it by one. <laughs> yes. So oh, no, he sucked by accident. So he blows <laughs> to try to spread this gas, yeah. and in the process, overloads the ventilation system, breaking it because he's a specialist at breaking things. <laughs> and the entire ventilation system in this ship is now destroyed. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> On the plus side, does that mean their moon mist isn't being uh, circulated either? It does. <laughs> it does. So, is there is there a is there a reroll mechanic? Can you spend an XP to You can spend an XP to reroll. You can spend an XP to reroll, but I don't yeah, have any can. XP. Oh! Can he have can he have one of mine? Yes. You can okay, take it. do that. <laughs> okay. You're out. <laughs> Oh, oh man! Hey, you guys, DPK. you guys Earth trying to destroy? You guys <laughs> trying to defeat my bad rolls? Uh, that's a sixteen. Okay. At yeah. first, I thought it was a six. <laughs> In an alternate universe, he destroyed the ventilation system, and you had to find a new way to spread to deal with everything. However, he succeeds, and as this uh, gas from that uh, time bombs starts blowing through the entire ventilation system after going off right nearby you guys so windows successfully channels it all nice so nightlight what are you doing i am going to turn a little dial on my belt all the way up and four different colored like monochromatic hologram duplicates of me kind of like <laughs> like come off uh for one minute they can all do different stuff uh, and, you know, act independently of each other. So they'll just help me in my difficult task of manipulating this wave of it. Okay, okay. You can absolutely do that. So, 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 uh, so you said it started at seven. I'm guessing it's seven. getting it harder now. An effort or anything else. Oh, oh it's right. Okay, I thought it was going to get yep. now It's eight or something. Nope. All right, so then I'll do the full Monty of points. Four plus my skills would be down to three. So, got to roll nine or better. Come on, glass. Natural 20. Okay. Yeah. The moon came up for me. It, the moon rose. All right. I'm all right. The yeah, moon rose. I got the, yeah, that's the <laughs> I got for that key. We're, we're just making all the <laughs> campaign references. Well, it's got a moon on the 20. That's why I got it for that key. That's amazing. So the night part of your night light activates. Yes. You warp all of the lights and they start mm -hmm. flickering and 
changing colors from this silvery blue to like a deep red. Right. And uh, it's now, working. Uh, what is Magpie doing to contribute to this role? Um. Do we have anything that we need distributed that we aren't already distributing? Like, well, you could like multiple lives. In theory, communicate. Huh? Okay. So I feel like it would be beneficial to know where all of our targets are. Okay. Uh, and I have children all over the ship right now, so I am going to like commune with them and figure out where exactly we need to spread the stuff. Okay. I don't know, but uh, maybe I can, I'm, I'm, I'm picturing Blowhard as like being super precise, you know, like guiding the, you know, just like like pneumatic thing almost, just like. Uh huh. Like, Fourteen. <laughs> Fourteen. All right. And what did did you lower it at all? No. Okay, so that is a failure. Okay. Because it starts at a seven, so you need twenty-one. So, uh, yeah, you you connect with your your different spawn, and you do get locations of where everyone is, but unfortunately, everyone is even on different ships. So it's going to make this whole process just a little more difficult. Um, I totally forgot there was even multiple ships. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what about Winda? Uh, so I thought like we that um, Blowhard and I were kind of like getting two different angles to get more gas out there all at once. Um, okay. So I was going to be taking the, the second batch, kind of like you know position you know a couple of tubes and just you know kind of speed wind it to kind of get it through there faster and you know put a, a barrier behind so another wind kind of pushes back. Okay, so none of it's gonna get you guys. Right. All right, cool, cool. Make that roll. All right, so doing this with uh, speed, you said it's a seven. So uh -huh. I'm bring, it, bring it down four. I'm gonna spend uh, effort, bring it down. Uh, so uh, seven brings it down to a three, effort brings it down to a two, I need a six. It's an 18. All right. <laughs> So you managed to successfully protect everyone from any of this gas affecting them in the process mm -hmm. as it fills through the ship and your wind powers simultaneously help it to spread more efficiently, making it so that you can, in theory, at this point, given your success rate and whatnot, spread it to the other ships too, if this works. Ilan, round us out. So, a lang like a holy in the back of a convertible with a baseball bat and male in a country town is going to use her successive attack ability to run around the ship bashing lights one after the other um, just smashing out the moonlights uh, okay. and because of her successive attack ability she just gets to go bang 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 as each one um comes into range, uh, she will use Might to do it because it's a Might ability as well. Okay. She's to spend two points to activate the ability. Uh, um, and then she has an edge of 10. So what's the difficulty again? Seven. Seven. So she brings it down four points to three. Okay. With her, my very specifically specialized character who tries to do anything else and fails <laughs> really badly. <laughs> and that is a 10, which hits. The All right. Quiet. So the gas, thanks to Winda and Blowhard, fills the entire ship. You guys are protected because of wind does warding winds. The lights warp to help hasten the process. You get all of the werewolves transformed, at least for now, back to their former selves. And Elang, like the chaotic energy that she is, once you have everyone gathered together, starts just destroying <laughs> everything just utterly destroying it. And the ship starts going for a crash landing in the bay. 
Ooh, I check the sensor and see if Arthur and our ship are still in the thing. There. They are, and they are trying to maintain. Arthur or Arnold is doing oh, a yeah, Arnold. job yeah, yeah, of driving to make it so that you guys can escape along with everyone else back onto the ship. Oh, great. Oh, de- definitely bringing, a, you know, a burnout and chill out. Yeah, and Regent and Silver Moon. All right, and... so you're bringing everybody. Well, we had him caged yeah. it. Except an ass and an assy who's probably dead by now. That's cool. <laughs> you win some, you lose some. <laughs> hey, is it, like I said, alien vampire werewolves, man. That's that, that, that's like a whole nother level. It is. You're right. That's not like killing a super. This is human. where it hates hits deep because he was this same age as Nightlight and Katie. Because he's only a young boy, right? He's only he like was 14. Boy. Oh, was he? Yeah. I didn't catch that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, hey, man. Sorry, bro. And uh, <laughs> you guys you turned into a va- alien vampire. Werewolf. I mean, <laughs> he was the jock we never liked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna spoil you with his actual backstory, but it's there in the document I gave you guys at the beginning. Uh, if you want to read about him, but he's actually a pretty wholesome person. My, my conscience, <laughs> my, my yeah, conscience I, I don't is clear. Read it now. Just gonna... My conscience is clear. Wyndham murdered him, <laughs> <laughs> and that's why, oh, kids, uh... why you shouldn't do drugs. Just so you know. <laughs> then you end up because murdering. You're gonna put kids. the baby in the oven, and you're gonna send a teenage superhero out in the space. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> He'll, he'll get one of those cool memorials like they have in the city for him and a his sacrifice statue. <laughs> it's alright. I'll, 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 I'll erect it like right so Winda can see it from his like his bedroom window every morning. <laughs> like the sun's coming right up on him. The greatest failure. We're all going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Steven. I love that Lindsay in the chat is just like, sorry, bro. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, turned, man. (laughs) We did we did our best. Oh, that was hilarious. (laughs) So uh anyway, you guys successfully get everyone back except for Anansi. Um you also uh managed to find that your allied heroes and villains did their part to keep the world safe and with your plan can in fact get most of the people back to a state of at least being physically who they were before. Right. So you guys actually saved the day and that was the ultimate crime. Boom! Ruined. (laughs) You guys ruined the ultimate alien crime. Yep. And at this point a I want at each of you. The phone is they walk off the ship and Eris some kind of love. <laughs> so at this point in venture, you guys have saved the world. And Dave, what does Blowhard's epilogue look like for you? He becomes the superhero uh, unarmed combat trainer. Okay. And it just kind of like hangs out at HQ. It becomes old, you know, and slightly slightly out of shape, but you know, he's there to help bring up the next generation of of crime ruiners. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so you're leaving like the Teen Titans. So, <laughs> no, no, not le- not not like a leader, more like um in DC there was that like old boxer, something cat. Oh, Wildcat. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he oh, just trains like- people how to fight. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So like, like beasts from X Men Evolution. Well, now we now, now we have to have a one shot of that, like as students. <laughs> okay. What about Nightlight? What does Nightlight's epilogue look like? Oh man. Well, first thing he does is have himself a really greasy cheeseburger at that. That was, that was freaking crazy what just happened. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, live it up sometimes. I don't even know if the world's gonna be here tomorrow. Who yeah. cares about my heart? <laughs> yeah. But now that it is, it's like, okay, I'm going to live a little bit. It's there. Go here. That's great. Um, and nice. then, yeah, he just can say, he goes, I mean, uh, he goes on to college and gets a master's degree in optical engineering and 
And you can go watch uh, our campaign on the uh, other channel under Marvel Superheroes if you want to know what else happens to Leo Lampley. Okay. The Marvel okay. phase rip is the evolution. Yeah, that's his. That's his future. This is this is his origin story. What was that? The Hudson Bay Heroes or Hudson? Oh, the uh, Hunts Point Heroes. Hunts yes. Point Heroes. Uh, we had the Light Cave and the Light Van and all that stuff. It was very nice. He was, his, his superpower is that he was super rich. Never, he was always a wimp the rest of his life, but he did uh, unlock the power to change the color of things or whatever. Yeah, Nightlight like, goes to fight crime alongside uh, Ash, Ash. Mashpit, yeah. Broadcast, and I think that uh, was it. Broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about Magpie? Magpie is master of the city now. You know, I got responsibilities <laughs> to, like, all the vampires that I made in order to help save the world. And I'm yeah. going to be a much better parent than that ever was. I frequently tell my vampire spawn that I am proud of them, and they're actually kind of embarrassed by it. Uh, so, you know, uh, my own mistakes, but... Stop it, Mom. Like, we're, we're like... <laughs> You know, we're, we're like a big vampire family. I've got my own nest and stuff, and we do occasionally steal things. <laughs> because, you know, I'll admit that I'm not a villain, but I'm still not quite a hero. Okay. You're nobody's hero. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He said the name of the right. thing. I did. <laughs> All right, what about Winda? What happens to him? So, with the, you know large portion of the A-listers having come back, you know, he easily is able to kind of like, you know, fall back into the shadows and allow the people who want the spotlight, you know, to kind of resume in that situation, you know, oh, why, you know, the other crime ruiners will certainly do stuff. Um, but like, you know, part of his life, you know, he was friends with, with Lisa and with uh, Magpie kind of on that cusp of not quite a hero, not quite a villain. I, he, he tries to stay in contact with Magpie to retain whatever humanity she might <laughs> still have and sure. make sure she doesn't ever cross that line and be aware of like, okay, if it has to happen, it happens. But he really, really doesn't want to. Okay, okay. What about Elang? Elang becomes the complete opposite of Winda to Magpie, and she becomes more morally ambiguous in her levels of fire to Magpie for guidance in that. And of course, um, she does create the ultimate team up of the carnivores. Um, okay. Which is basically her like regent hot dog. Um, Ying Yang pops in every now and then, he gets bored <laughs> of hanging, <laughs> hanging so you out. you became an anti-hero? Yes, she becomes a super violent anti-hero due to the influence of who she thinks is a hero of Magpie. Um, so yeah, she's, she's, uh, she gets a bit, she gets dark and gritty, um, kind of like vibe. And you know, Regent doesn't help. Um, you know, the spliced lion drug lord mm -hmm. that she also brings in, you know, and she's hanging out with like um, uh, Gator Giles. So, like, <laughs> she's got some pretty bad influences going on. Um, and she doesn't understand because she's no give as fuck and is all like, these are my friends and we eat meat. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the only commonality. Yeah. The best cool. epilogue. <laughs> and so you guys save Kestopolis. You save the day. Thanks to the crime ruiners. Thank you guys Bye. so much. This was a great campaign. You guys are awesome. Thank you. I yeah. love those Thank epilogues. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for running, Steven. And Mooley, thanks for joining us for uh for for this season. We really appreciate having you here. It's awesome. Uh Folks, we got a special treat for you next week. Our friend Brian Cohen is crowdfunding on um, Game, Game Found for an adventure for Morkborg. So we're going to be doing a one shot of Morkborg here on the channel next week, which we'll see 
if we survive or not. I mean, I, I did make it through my last adventure with my hero that had one hit point, which was a lot of fun. <laughs> it's a really kind of dark and gritty uh, OSR style game. So if you want to come check out a dungeon crawl, that's what we're going to be doing. And then we're going to be off for two weeks. And then we'll be back with a brand new season. I'll be the GM. I'll be in the hot seat. And we're going to be playing and running our very own RPG that we are have in the works called Zoo Mafia. Um, and I also, I believe, Ted has something he wants to say. Indeed, yeah. So if that's not if uh, that's not enough gaming for you, you can come on back Friday night, 8 p.m., where you can join Robin and myself as we do uh, episode 13 of Untraditionally Arcane. That's right. It's episode 13 happening on April the 1st. So all kinds of weird stuff is expected. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, come check us out. I just wanted to say again, thank you so much for having me, guys. I... I will be back when I work up enough work leave to uh, have, have another 12 weeks off. Uh, it will probably only take me another three months. Uh, these guys are a blast and bring me so much joy to play within this campaign. So check out their new one because I've heard little bits and bops and sneak peeks of Zoom Mafia and I, I am hyped for it. It sounds so much fun. Yeah, we're super excited to go out and do crime. Um, <laughs> yeah, Aus- Aus- the Australian time zones are the hardest to sync up. <laughs> and I'm always amazed when we do manage to get something going on. It's a big difference. It's always yeah, like so- a ridiculous time. So, so we it was definitely a pleasure appreciate having you, you being here. Yeah, awesome playing with you. Yeah, yes. I love you guys. You're amazing. Yes, and if you guys aren't following her on TikTok, yeah. what are you even doing with yourselves? Like, she has TikTok. It's great. I follow her, and it's amazing. <laughs> like, y'all should be following. And if you her. and if you get on TikTok and you follow Nerdarchy, you get to see Dave's guns. So, like, yes. <laughs> Dave is like low key swole. <laughs> well, That's what we tell him. Yeah, now I'm trying to get back into the gym now. I had my first physical therapy today, so we'll we'll see if we can get my shoulders in order so I can pick them, <laughs> up and pick them down. But with that, thanks everyone for hanging out with us as always, uh, and until next time, stay nerdy. Stay nerdy. Stay nerdy. Nerdy. nerdy.